In our airways, the air we breathe comes into contact with a mixture of different types of healthy respiratory cells. Some respiratory cells have hair-like structures that move the mucus along. SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus targets these hairy cells. The virus itself is deceptively simple. It consists of only a few parts, but together, these parts create a highly effective virus. It has an outer membrane with three types of proteins on it. Spike, envelope, and membrane proteins. Inside the virus, an assembly of nucleocapsid proteins hold together its genetic material, a single strand of viral RNA. The spike protein is responsible for making contact with the host cell and starting the infection. It has a coat of sugars that hides it from the body's immune system. Many of the variants of SARS-CoV-2 are characterized by mutations on this spike protein, seen here in red. These mutations can influence its function, some making the virus more infectious. Many mutations are unique to each variant, but some, like D416G, are found in each of the variants of concern. When the virus closes in on a host cell, its spike proteins open up and bind to a receptor on the host cell. The outer part of the spike protein is then cut off by a protein on the host cell membrane. This frees the inner core of the spike protein, which is cut open. The spike protein then unfurls and anchors into the host cell membrane, pulling the virus closer until the cell membrane and the viral membrane fuse, allowing the viral genome to enter the host cell. Inside the cell, a ribosome meets the viral RNA and starts to translate its genetic code. The result is a long protein chain containing non-structural proteins, or NSPs. Initially, these NSPs are all attached to one another, but some of the NSPs are able to cut the chain. The result of this cutting is the release of another NSP, which is able to grab onto a ribosome and occupy it in such a way that the ribosome can only read viral RNA, and not the host cell's own RNA. This means that the virus takes over the cell's protein production machinery, turning the host cell into a virus-building factory. Meanwhile, the long protein chain is cut into individual NSPs. Eventually, the production of NSPs stops due to the presence of a knot in the viral RNA. This prevents the remaining RNA, which codes for the machinery involved in duplicating the viral genome, from passing through the ribosome. The protein production can either stop here, or the knot in the viral RNA can slip, allowing the remaining viral RNA to be read. Because of the knot, the translation of the viral RNA often stops prematurely. This is an ingenious way for the virus to control how many proteins are being made. More of the membrane-modifying NSPs from before the knot, and fewer of the RNA-processing NSPs from after the knot. The NSPs that are embedded into the membrane cause it to curve. This disrupts the flat shape of the membrane and creates a structure called a double membrane vesicle, or DMV. These DMVs create a safe, enclosed environment for the viral genome to be copied. Inside the DMV, several NSPs combine to form the machinery to create new viral RNA. Firstly, a complementary strand is made to act as a reference. This reference then becomes the template for a new strand identical to the original viral genome. In addition to the full-length viral genome, a set of shorter RNA strands is also created. These shorter strands are called subgenomic RNA and will be processed by the host cell to create the proteins that go into the new viral particle. The subgenomic RNA exits the DMV through an NSP pore. After exiting, it makes its way back to a ribosome and is translated to make the main proteins that will constitute the new SARS-CoV-2 viral particle. The spike, envelope, membrane, 
and nucleocapsid proteins. The newly created nucleocapsid protein sits right by the DMV pore, ready to grab onto the viral genome RNA as it exits the DMV. The nucleocapsid protein then begins packaging the RNA into what will become the contents of the new viral particles. After the spike, envelope and membrane proteins have been made, they go to a different part of the cell. There, the membrane proteins are able to catch the nucleocapsid proteins and viral genome. This makes the membrane bend inwards, and a new viral particle eventually buds. When the membrane compartment containing the viral particle fuses with the outer cell membrane, the viral particles are then released from the cell. But that's only the first wave of SARS-CoV-2 particles that will be expelled. Eventually, the host cell produces so many viral particles that it dies and releases a whole wave of new virus particles into the surrounding tissue, ready to spread and infect nearby cells. This completes the life cycle of a single SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus.